Good morning and welcome to First Lutheran Church uh, live streaming today. Today as we gather uh, together, we do so from many different places, but still as the people of God. In a time of questions, we serve a God who loves us dearly, who is with us always, who promises us that no matter what happens, He is in control. So today as we worship the Lord, whether it be from your home or whether it be from another place, may you know God's present with you. May you know His love for you. May you know His peace. Let's put aside the things of this world and worship our Lord together this morning. Please join me as we sing together our opening song today, Even So Come.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in word, in thought, word, and deed, that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And we confess together, Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of Christ by the, his authority, announce the grace of God unto each of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Please join me as we go to our gracious God now in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning, and though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This time we'll hear the readings from God's Word as appointed for this morning. Good morning. If you would like to follow along with today's readings, please do so in your Bible at home or on the screen. The Old Testament reading for today is from the 42nd chapter of Isaiah beginning at the 14th verse. For a long time I have held my peace. I have kept still and restrained myself. Now I will cry out like a woman in labor. I will gasp and pant. I will lay waste mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will turn the rivers into islands and dry up the pools. And I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know, in paths that they have not known, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. These are the things I do, and I do not forsake them. They are turned back and utterly put to shame, who trust in carved idols, who say to metal images, you are our gods. Hear you deaf, and look, you blind, that you may see. Who is blind but my servant? or deaf as my messenger whom I send? Who is blind as my dedicated one, or blind as the servant of the Lord? He sees many things, but does not observe them. His ears are open, but he does not hear. The Lord was pleased for his righteousness sake, to magnify his law and make it glorious. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading for this morning is from Ephesians, the fifth chapter, beginning at the eighth verse. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are the light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true, and try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Continuing our theme of, of blindness and also the giving of sight, we hear our gospel reading from John the ninth chapter this morning. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spat on the ground and made mud with his saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is he. Others said, No, but he is like him. He kept saying, I am the man. So they said to him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus, made mud, and anointed my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. So the Pharisees again asked him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, He put mud on my eyes, and I wash, and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? There was a division among them. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him, since he has opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But how he now sees, we don't, do not know. Nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess Jesus to be Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give glory to God, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered, Whether he is a sinner I do not know. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? And they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Why? This is an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you were born in utter sin, and would you teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard these things, and said to him, 
Are we also blind? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now that you say we see, your guilt remains. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. I invite you to join me as we confess together our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, we'll continue with our song of the day, Cornerstone.
my dear family and friends, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, may the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, guard your hearts and minds today and every day, knowing that you are His. Today we're going to continue our sermon series, and just to catch you up, we, we've been looking at crucial questions that, that come to us from the Gospels. Things that Jesus has said that have challenged us, that challenge us as the people of God each and every day, but, but things that also are meant to reveal to us who He is, who He is to us, who He is to this world. So we're prepared to hear God's word for us this morning. We're, we're going to be in John chapter 9, so if you haven't already uh, gone to that page in your, in your Bibles, then I certainly invite you to do so, or use your smartphone, of course, many of you will be taking advantage of that, which is awesome. Uh, but uh, we're going to be going there in just a minute, but let's first bow our heads uh, in a word of prayer. Oh Lord, you are good and gracious. You love us dearly and you have given your life for us. You have revealed to us your deep love for us, that while we were yet sinners, you laid down your life on the cross. Lord, help us to live each day as those who are no longer blind, but as those who can see. Those who at one time were far off, but now you have called in. Lord, as we face the challenges of this world of this time, help us to see your hand at work. Help us to see your mighty hand moving in many and various ways. Comfort us, strengthen us, lead us, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. I don't know if you remember these or if you've ever even heard of them, but when I was growing up, we had these books called Magic Eye Books. Does anybody remember Magic Eye Books? Okay, at least a couple of uh, folks. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm happy to hear that, just like I asked last week about a uh, band and wondered who would hear, who would have heard of that. But uh, Magic Eye Books, in case you didn't know what they were, they had a kaleidoscope of colors, and you would focus in on this uh, image that was 2D, and then as you focused in, you'd, you'd maybe uh, hopefully see a 3D image pop off the page. Hopefully, I say, because if you were like me, you would spend hours maybe not hours, but at least you'd spend time on over and over trying to squint at this picture and get your eyes to the just the right way, only to never see the 3D image pop off the page. I've learned since that these are called auto-stereograms, and the intent there is to bring a 3D image by uh, the focusing in on the, those colored kaleidoscopes. But for me, I didn't see. Now, thankfully, on the opposite page, they usually would have uh, what the 3D image were supposed to see was, but that would, if they, that would have been there, I wouldn't have been able to see. And as maybe some of you can relate to me. Maybe there's, there's times where you just can't see. Maybe there's times where, where you've tried to focus or you've tried to look at a situation and you just couldn't see. I'm not talking about auto stereograms now. I'm referring to the very reality that there's sometimes parts of our lives that no matter how hard we try to focus, we just can't see. Or we just don't get it. Maybe you can relate. Maybe you had a conversation before where you're going along, you're talking, and you think that you're communicating what you mean, and, and, and then you get this response out of the clear blue, and you're like, where did that come from? I didn't see that coming. Or, or maybe some of you who are married, uh, um, you, your spouse, you've had uh, these times where they're giving you the silent treatment, and you're like, what did I do? And for the life of you, you cannot figure it out. And, and maybe some of you with kids can relate, and you can think of a time where, where maybe you've been you know, trying to instill values in your children, and they just don't see. All of us have those times in our lives where we struggle to see what should be plain before us. All of us have those times where we struggle to, to, with that question of, what did I miss? What is beyond what is before me? Today in our Gospel reading from John chapter 9, in a man who was blind, born blind from birth, a man who really did not know what he was missing, for his whole life he had wondered what it looks like to see water running. He had heard it, certainly. He wondered what it would be to, to look at a person's face. To, to, no, he, he had probably touched their faces many times and, and felt the shape of a nose or the shape of an ear, but, but never seen it. 
And, 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 and so many other things too. The temple maybe had been described to him, but all he could feel was the, the rough hewn brick. And, and, and this man, he, he didn't know what he didn't, couldn't see. He didn't know what he was missing. But this was just a physical limitation. A physical limitation that Jesus brought healing to with physical elements. A physical limitation that Jesus, using his own spittle and mud and dirt, he wiped it across his eyes and, and gave this man sight so he could see all the things he could not see. But there was another blindness that was described in our gospel reading for this morning. If you have your Bibles, like I said, we're going to go to John 9. And I just want to remind you, don't worry, we're not going to read all 41 verses. Again, I hope you were listening through the whole thing. It's worth hearing because there's a lot there. But, but I just want to uh, pick up on a couple of verses at the beginning. John 9, 1 through 3, if you want to join me. <clears throat> and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, and this is the blindness here, guys. Okay? Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. The question the disciples asked revealed a certain level of spiritual blindness. The question that they asked revealed what they had learned, what they'd been taught through the years. And when they looked upon God, what did they see? They saw a God who was a cruel and righteous judge. That if you stepped out of line, either you or your children would be punished. Their concept of God was, that it was closed off, was darkened. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine if you lived each day waiting for God to pass judgment on you? You didn't say, thank you, Lord, for helping me wake up this morning. Uh-oh, now my life's in jeopardy. You did say, oh Lord, I honor you and glorify you with all that I do. I hope he doesn't miss this one. I hope he misses this one. Can you imagine living each day with that blindness to who God really was? Can you imagine living each day seeing God as that, that, that judge who's just waiting for you to fail? Some people still live that way. We might say, oh, pastor, that was just the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the teachers of the law. This was before Jesus. Was it? If that's the case, then, then why are there still people today who will say things like the coronavirus is a result of God's judgment on the world? Don't believe me? You don't have to think too far back. Think back to the 1980s. And what happened in the 80s? This terrible virus started to be th spread. You remember what it was called? The AIDS virus, right? And what did people say? They said that AIDS virus was a result of God's judgment on his creation because of people living sinful lives. Christians said this. God's people said this. Spiritual blindness, unfortunately, is still in effect. Sometimes it's, it, it's self-imposed. Sometimes we choose not to see what God is doing, the ways he is working. Sometimes it's, it, it, it's, it's ignorance like it was for the disciples. Maybe an expectation that how could God love us, care for us, be with us when we've messed up so many times, when we've failed him, when we've sinned against him. And we live in this world, though, that needs to know who God is. We need to stop asking who sinned. Was it Italy? Was it China? Was it the US of A or Canada? Who sinned this man or his parents? That's not the question we should be asking. We should be asking, how might the works of God be displayed in the midst of this situation, in the midst of our world today? What can't we see? We can't see all that God is doing and he is going to do. What can't you see, what can't I see, is what the future holds. But we follow a God who loves us and cares for us, who has laid down his life for us, who has shown us deeper compassion than we can imagine. The disciples, they missed it, they were ignorant to it. But Jesus opened their eyes. God is a God of love and compassion. 
God is a God who, despite the fact we fail, he offers us forgiveness. God is a God who is even with us right now. And people need to see that in us. People need to see our faith and our hope, and they need to see that God is alive and well and he is working. They need to see that God is not a God who is sitting there in righteous judgment waiting for them to mess up. But he is a God who took on human flesh, who bore our sins on the cross and declared that we are forgiven. No longer does he see us as those who have sinned and fallen short, but he sees us as those who are righteous because we are clothed in the righteousness of Christ. And we were given those garments in our baptisms when we were washed and made clean. Not with spittle and mud, of course, but, but with the waters of holy baptism. We were washed and made clean. And now God sees us as his righteous children clothed in Christ. You know, in the reading... Unfortunately, there was a third blindness that was mentioned. And this is probably the most difficult part of this entire text as I preach it this morning. Because the physical limitations, we see the beauty of what God did in restoring the man's sight. With the ignorance of the disciples, it was because they didn't know any better. But then there's a third category. Right at the end of John, our reading from John 9, we have the response of the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, the, the Sanhedrin. If you were wondering, who did they drag him before? They would have dragged him before the, the Sanhedrin. And when he got put out of the temple, that's who would have put him out. I want to just turn right to the end of John 9 here. And listen to what Jesus says. And, and these are hard words. Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world that those who do not see may see, and those who, may, who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard these things and said to him, Are we also blind? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have had no guilt. But now that you say we see, your guilt remains. Hard words from Jesus. These people, they, they saw what Jesus did and they rejected him. They saw him heal this blind man, restore the hearing of the deaf, restore the bodies of the broken, and bring healing and strength to those in the world. But they rejected him. They reject, rejected Jesus as the Son of God, and they chose to remain in darkness. They chose to remain blinded, blind to him. It wasn't ignorance. It wasn't a physical limitation. It was a spiritual decision to reject God, to reject Jesus. And the hard words of Jesus are, they bear their own guilt. They bear that, own, that consequence. Jesus took our sins. Jesus took our guilt. Jesus bears our sins and guilt. But if we reject him, then we come before the Father. Then we come before him, covered in our sin. Dear people of God, we have the light. We have the sight because Jesus has revealed himself to us. He has redeemed us. He has made us whole and he has restored us. Our world always needs this good news, but especially right now, they need to know who Jesus is. They need to know that Jesus is the one who stoops down and cares enough to, to touch a man and, and to heal his eyes when others would not have done so. They need to know that Jesus is a God who is not distant and standing in the clouds waiting for us to mess up, but he is a God who has come down to be among us and borne our sins, and he has given his life for us. And they need to know that he is a God who did not stay dead, but he rose on the third day, and he declared victory once and for all. The struggles, the questions we face right now, they are short. The challenges of our world, the things we cannot see, the few, what the future holds, our God holds on to them. 
Dear people of God, look upon the Lord. Know his forgiveness and know his strength. And know that he is with you and he will get us through. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we thank you for making a way for us when there was no other way. For we were in the darkness of sin. We were blind, but you have given us sight. O oh Lord, help us to live each day as your people who bring your love and your compassion to the world so that they don't have to ask, what are we missing? What can't we see? But that they would see you in us. The Apostle John, as he was writing in his old age, said, No one has ever seen you. But when we love one another, your works are made perfect in us. Lord, make your, per make your works perfect in us, that others may see you and see your love. This we pray in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. This time in our service, we're going to take some time to go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to lift up our hearts and we're going to come before Him. And I'm going to take some time today and uh, initially where we, we just take a, a, some time for you to lift up the prayers that, uh, that individually on your hearts and then, and then we'll go into our corporate prayers. But I want you to take some time right now to just come before God. Talk to Him about what's on your mind, the fears you have, but the joys you have as well. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. and you love. Lord, guard and keep each of us that we may face no harm or danger. Lord, surround and protect us from every harm of body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in these uncertain times, lead us to trust you more boldly. Although we may not know what the future holds, if there will even be a tomorrow, we know that you govern and keep each of our days. Lord, you are the great physician. And we thank you for all those who you have placed your healing hands upon, those you have restored and brought to full health. Lord, we ask that you would hear our prayers on behalf of all those who are ill or injured, those who have been hospitalized, those undergoing surgery. Lord, those we named before you in our hearts or in our minds. Touch them, O oh Lord. Touch them with your healing hand. Give them strength. Renew them. That they may run and not grow weary. That they may walk and not faint. Lord, be with all the medical and health professionals, first responders and doctors, nurses, all those who are on the front lines right now. Surround them and keep them safe. Protect them so that they may continue to serve. Lord, be with our leaders during this time. Be with them that they would be faithful, that they would honor you. Lord, that they would bring justice to our land. Lord, that they would seek the right course of action in responding to this pandemic. Lord, that fill them with wisdom and lead each of us to live at peace with one another. 
Lord, we pray for our armed forces, especially at this time. Lord, as they are local and as they are de deployed around the world, we ask that you would defend them and grant them your blessings. Lord, be with all emergency workers. Lord, as we come to you, we know that there are things to give thanks to you for. We thank you for opportunities to worship together today, to join together freely. We thank you with those who are celebrating and anniversaries and, and, and the time that they've been together. With. And Lord, we, we thank you with those who are celebrating life, those who are celebrating their birthdays this week, especially Kinsley and Jane and Phil and Charmaine. Lord, bless them in their celebration. Fill them with gladness, knowing that each day is a precious gift from you. And Lord, for those who mourn, especially we pray for the Wells family as they mourn the death of Kay's sister-in-law, Ruth. Lord, grant them comfort in this time. Grant them peace. Reassure them that all life is in your hands and all life is precious to you. Lord, for our first Lutheran family, for our Circle of Love preschool family. Lord, for all the churches and schools who are facing questions and concerns at this time, grant to us your wisdom, your guidance. Give to us confidence and trust that all things are in your hand. Lord, lead us that we would use every gift to your glory, to your honor, to the extension of your kingdom. And Lord, when we look back at this time, May we see all that you are doing. Open our eyes to your works that we may know with confidence that you are almighty. You are sovereign. You are in control. Mercifully, O oh Lord, accept each of our prayers in the name of Christ Jesus, who is our Lord and who is our Savior. And together, O oh Lord, as a family spread out, we pray the prayer that you have taught us, our family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. I invite you to join me as we sing our closing hymn for this morning. Jesus loves me, and uh, it's a little different than the one you remember growing up. Is uh, but we will sing together the words to Jesus loves me.
that can fit into plastic Easter eggs. Easter egg donations are also welcome. Please bring donations to Julie Fellows, the church office, or the Narthex. This year's Lenten devotionals are furnished by LINK, Lutheran Intercity Network Coalition. Please take one and one to share with a friend to enrich your time of study and reflection throughout this season. Everyone is invited to join us online for our midweek Lenten service this Wednesday at 5.25 p.m. Soup supper has been canceled. LWML is extending their Easter fundraiser for one more week. Delivery will be on Palm Sunday. See an LWML lady to order your C's candy. Sunday school classes for the children will be canceled until after Easter. Ladies and gents will be meeting virtually. If you would like a link, please contact the office. You can also attend services virtually if you like. Please see the note in the First Family. We would like to invite you to join with the local congregations and to pray at 6 p.m. nightly. If anyone has any specific prayers or desires to be anointed with oil, well, we can't quite do that this this at this time, but um, we will, as the elders and the deacon and the pastor always do, lift you up in prayer. Uh, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And one last thing is, uh, for those of you, uh, we're going to stop this live stream, um, but I'm going to try to do a Bible study this morning. Uh, so if you'd like to join us for a little time of Bible study uh, in about, oh, 10 minutes, let's call it 10 minutes. I think that's about 10.35. Uh, you can join us for a time of Bible study this morning uh, remotely, and um, if I get no views, I'll still do it. God Just bless you all. to get some coffee. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 